Hello, I'm John Canalopoulos, an eye surgeon based in Athens, Greece, in New York City, New York, clinical professor of ophthalmology at NYU Medical Center in New York City. I'm very pleased to you to introduce to you the data of this work. It has been traditional knowledge that femtosecond lasers may give a more accurate central flap thickness uh, measurement, uh, and this is inherent in the technology of uh, femtosecond lasers. What we found in this paper, which is quite impressive for us as well, is that is, there is a great variability in the thickness of flaps in different parts of these flaps being able to be created with the Artemis high-frequency ultrasound device between the M2 uh, manual microkeratome, um, the intralace uh, femtosecond laser, and the FS200 wavelight femtosecond laser. The most impressive part is that the two femtosecond lasers were not similar into their flap distribution uh, thickness. And this is very bizarre uh, as a clinical measurement. Um, we speculate that this is probably a result of um, uh, forces taking place within the lamellar cut of the uh, femtosecond laser flap. Uh, the air pocket created uh, during the beginning of the lamellar femtosecond la laser flap may affect uh, that flap thickness uh, throughout the entire uh, surface of the flap. Uh, these two femtosecond lasers use a different mechanism of evacuating the gas produced during the lamellar uh, cut. The interlace specifically, as we described in the paper, um, produces a air pocket vertical at the beginning of the flap in order to absorb and uh, decompress some of that air pressure, uh, reduce OBL, and, and increase the accuracy of the lamellar cut the FS200 uh, laser creates a chimney at the beginning of the flap, uh, making which uh, during the lamellar cut of the flap vents um, the, this uh, cre a gas created uh, outside lamellar cut, and perhaps this may be the reason why it appears to be more accurate in topometric and topographic data of this flap thickness throughout the entire flap. I hope you find this uh, paper interesting, uh, and we look forward to validating the data from this paper in larger future studies. Thank you very much. Here, for example, is the Moria M2. See how fast the flap is created. Obviously, there's no venting mechanism here as there's no interstromal gas. Here's the, right now, the Intralace FS60 made a vertical pocket and then went on to the lamellar cut. And now the FS200 uh, laser, which makes a direct chimney to outside the cornea, which vents during the lamellar cut. So three different mechanisms here. We can see the uh, Artemis high-frequency ultrasound and how it can map cornea thickness, epithelial thickness, and flap thickness in LASIK patients. It's really uh, an impressive uh, data with this technology. And here, the three groups of uh, patients we evaluated. You can see here the dramatic difference between uh, microkeratome flaps, interlace flaps, and FS200 wave-like from the second laser flaps. And here, the very impressive data on the variability of flap thickness within each flap and see the big difference between M2 interlace and FS200. Here's the epithelial map thicknesses and variability which show no difference. So what is the take-home message from this uh, study? For us, very impressive. Not all flaps are equal even when we compare two different femtosecond laser uh, keratomes. There is great flap thickness variability within each flap which may have ramifications in the quality of vision at night. Obviously, this was not an artifact by epithelial hyperplasia between all the different flaps, and this was confirmed within our study by studying the epithelial thickness maps as well. I hope you found this presentation helpful, and I thank you very much for your attention.